Hey guys, welcome back. This is Evan with Underhill Bonsai, and today I'm going to be working on yet another flat top bald cypress design. But before we get too far, just want to let you guys know that I am the nursery manager here up at Underhill Bonsai, located in Folsom, Louisiana. We are Louisiana's premier bonsai nursery, and we have everything that a bonsai enthusiast from beginner all the way up to expert level could ever need as far as tools, soil, pottery, cut paste, everything from pre-bonsai all the way up to specimen bonsai. But before I get too far into it, just wanted to let you guys know who are new to the channel. Click and subscribe, share, turn on notifications, spread the love, and let's get into it. This tree is quite a bit larger than the other bald cypress that I worked on in that previous video. So I think the other cypress that's behind the camera right now, remember the flare on it? was roughly about five, six inches, coming up to a trunk base of four inches. Let's see. This tree, and here's like the widest point of it right here. This tree is right, it's right over the 12 inch mark as far as how far out this, this flare comes up. And then we're hitting the six inch, we're hitting six inches right here. So from here to just right here, there is a six inch difference in the flare and the taper in this tree. So I'm presented with a little bit more of a challenge when it comes to scale and finished height for this one. And I want to do a close up of the base on here and just turn it around so you guys can see what's going on. And then also the top where it's been chopped and you can see all these really strong coarse branches uh, coming out of it. Just look at this lovely base going on down here. We got lots of old, old wood, old bark textures, and it's pretty even all the way around. Whereas with the other tree that I worked on in the previous video, um, in bonsai flat top creation number one, this one has roots all the way around, whereas the other tree had roots on just one side of the tree. And there would be a little bit more work to be done in the future as far as growing out a nice radial root pattern like this one has. Um, so this tree, I'm gonna be honest with you, this one's gonna have lots of opportunities. I'm gonna have to turn this tree around for a good while just to see where I even wanna start to uh, design this tree for the front. Uh, this, the, the selection of the front on this tree is going to be a lot tougher. There are two obvious areas where it would probably make a better front, and that would be right here. So kind of this cross section of uh, the trunk right here, just because it's one of the widest points, and that's one thing that, that we do whenever we're choosing the front of a potential bonsai piece is that we want to make sure that the base not only looks good from the perspective that the flare and the, the roots look mature, but also we want the widest point so we can get the most out of our base. And also something else that they don't teach a whole lot when it comes to finding that broad point, broadest point of your root mass or a root base more like, uh, is also depth of field. So let's turn it around. This one's, this is another wide point. This is a little flatter feeling now. And I mean that because there's, this root comes forward towards the camera there. And then you have these two other roots that kind of come out. And depth of field on this base would be the fact that this goes in a little bit right here. And this goes in a little bit right here. And there's some interest here. But if we go back to our other base over here, there's an even deeper inset. And that's one reason why we use bald cypress for bone size for that flare, for that fluting looking base. And this is pretty close to that. And I have one, two, there's a third one right here, four, five visual actual roots. So surface looking roots on this side. So this is a strong possibility for the front. So let's, uh, let's look at the top of this tree. So this is a real mess up here. Uh, just because of how many really strong coarse shoots developed up here. And 
there is a good amount right out, this is the chop. So for those who are not familiar with uh, collecting Yamadori or just trees from the wild, um, one of the things that you get when you collect a wild tree is with deciduous trees, we stump them. And so we cut them to a flat stump on the top. It's best to do a flat cut for multiple reasons. And I will kind of do a little walkthrough and draw it up on a dry erase board in just a moment here to explain why. But this tree here, there is one, two, three, four, five, just coming at the top. And the cambium, which is that layer of new bark that rolls over a wounded area, uh, you can tell it's cambium because it looks very fresh. There's not any heavy plated bark on it. It's usually the same color as the shoots, in this case with bald cypress. They're a little bit more maroon or mahogany kind of reddish color to them. And so that cambium layer is also that same color and it looks very new. And it, and it literally looks like it's rolling over. So you can see that it's done a lot of work trying to heal over this wound. There's a couple trees in the back that have already healed over chops that are roughly about a half inch to an inch in diameter from last year and they will they will completely heal from that so let's pull out the dry erase board and kind of walk through why we do a flat chop okay so it's one of my favorite parts about kind of talking about bald cypresses and how to how to cut and how to initially collect them and really set yourself up for success so that you don't waste time and multiple growing seasons and just prematurely chop down the tree shorter or or maybe cut it a certain way so this technique has worked really well for me and other bold cypress collectors in this area of the southeast so when we go in we always collect our tree and it's going to quite literally be a tree like uh, most of the trees we collect around here are roughly about 15 20 feet tall um, especially with this one here with the 12 inch base I mean this sucker was easily a 20 foot tall tree when it was growing in the swamp or pond or riverside wherever it might have come from um, I have to ask Nate uh, this is another Nate Murray tree and so what we'll want to do is let me draw let me draw two trees just so we can have examples. So here's example one, and here will be example two. So we got another tall, straight, skinny guy with some roots. Um, and this could be example two. So this is going to be the right way, and this is going to be the wrong way. So we collect this tree, we put it in a pot. So boom, it's in this black mortar tub. Here's tree number one. Tree number two, collect it, put it in a mortar pot or a mortar tub. Um, boom, we got two trees. First one, hypothetical, this is very hypothetical. Uh, so the first one, I'm gonna do just like this tree over here and where the taper stops, I'm gonna go right there. Uh, raspberry, raspberry noise and all, that's what sound it makes. And I'm gonna make a straight cut like that. This one over here, I noticed that there is some taper in it and I'm going to do it the wrong way as like kind of like that premature like okay well I want taper obviously so I'm going to cut it where the taper stops right up here but then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and carve that taper in right that sounds like a great idea right like that's that cuts doesn't that take out like a year for me like a year's worth of time no it does not because it's gonna take a lot of luck to get what you're expecting out of going ahead and making that carve now. What this tree is gonna do on this side, example number one, is gonna make a bunch of shoots come out of the top of this tree. For the sake of keeping it simple, let's say there's three strong shoots. That one uh, right next to me, this live tree right next to me has five shoots coming out the top. This one, this is the tree where it was cut. So usually whenever there's damage to a tree, there's a cut, zone multiple shoots generate out of the cut zone they do not regenerate a branch instead trees generate multiple new possibilities for branching 
So this tree is going to do not only this, but it's also going to do this, and this, and this, and you'll probably have a few pieces that come out like this. And you're like saying, oh wait, that's great and all because I've got plenty of shoots where I need them, and I could just cut them off. But when you cut these off, there's going to be little, there's going to be little cut wounds right next to that that cut that carve mark that you made before, and the tree is going to have ugly scarring right next to that. Also, this right here, this shoot right here, is not always going to happen. But right here, this is always going to happen. Now, unless you have some, like, some kind of dieback where it, it dies back to the base, which is unfortunate, it does happen sometimes. Best case, got shoots that come out of there. The central leader, I cut these off. And then what you saw me on, do on the previous video, if you haven't, refer back to the first video of uh, Bald Cypress Design. I carved these out like this and carved them into this central point. And then this is allowed to run and run and grow and it heals that over. Whereas over here, I've got all kinds of cut sites and marks. Okay, so going off of the previous two examples, this is the example one. So this is gonna be the one where I had the trunk and there was some good taper going on. And there was a little flare. Let's just say this is the flare. Here's your little buttresses. And here's your pot. And then up here is where I made that, that chop. And then I carved in the side. So originally it was like this. And usually when people do this kind of procedure and carve it in, um, they typically put the, belt, the bulk of that, that carve away section on the back side so it's not so visual. Um, helps hide it, the scar is not as obvious. Um, the previous tree that I did on the, the video before, I actually left it towards the front in favor of the Nabari. It was the best from that side. And also, I just like the movement in the trunk from that angle. So I'm going to deal with it and develop the tree because I know it's going to roll over eventually. So we have the, we have the, that main central leader coming off of there. We had removed the two that were hanging out on this other section here. So what's going to happen now is that on the back side of this cut, I'm going to kind of draw it right here. So this is what the back side of the cut looks like. And it's the really thin leader. And it's been carved in a way that there's a bump right here of dead wood. So I carved out the back side and, uh, and left the tree nice and healthy. So this is, if you turn the tree just slightly where you can see from the side view of it. And so over time, when this lengthens, it'll get, it'll get thicker. And so this is going to take on more girth and this is going to become less obvious and the tree is going to round off this, this scar and it's going to start to look, the taper is going to start to look more believable. Now this will eventually start straightening out and it will become one thickness as it goes up and up. And this backside version of what this was going to start looking like is the canyon is going to start rolling over that and it's going to start going into this leader like this. And all this is going to start rolling over and that scar is eventually going to completely, completely heal over where it is a lot, lot less noticeable. Well, well, it's going to be more rounded like that whenever that taper finally heals all the way over. And so these guys don't exist anymore. They don't matter. And then this chop. So now we ended up with this. And basically, the next part of this would be chop again. Now that the wound is healed back here, we chop again and encourage more shoots to come out the top again. And then for directional purposes, we'll start growing out the branches up here. And I would probably go with something like 
off to the side there, chop again, carve again, and then it will round out and then you'll get more branches and then so on and so forth. And while this is all happening up here, there will already be, have been branches down here in development on the tree. Um, and so all this will eventually turn into that. And so basically up here, that piece that I showed going off, you would choose one to grow out and induce that next layer of taper into it and chop again. And so basically you're just gonna be, aside from all the smudge marks, you're gonna be chop, grow out, chop, grow out, chop, grow out, until you get that taper in smaller and smaller increments. And then you can finally get something that resembles the tree that you're, you're aiming to get. Um, so let's pan back out and we'll come look at this tree and kind of study the design. I might even draw it on this board a little bit right here. Okay, so based off of the points that I went over for how to deal with the chop and how everything's grown out of the top of this, I'm looking at the five different shoots that come out of the top of here. And I'm only pertaining to this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. There is a, there is a sixth one back here, but this one is coming out of a lower branch. So this one is out of the picture, and then this one right here is a little bit lower than the chop. So I'm looking at one, one of these two guys here um, for a couple of different reasons. One, I have grown comfortable with this front because I kind of like the way that the Navari, the surface roots, just the, the roots right here. So after referring back to how I was drawing out the examples, I'm going to be looking at which one of these five shoots I'm going to choose. Ignore these back here. This one occurs a little bit lower uh, from the chop. This one comes out of a branch, at the top of a branch on the back side. I'm just going to remove it. But you've got five strong shoots, and I want to see which one's going to look better to carve into and induce taper into the top of this tree. I've chosen this as the front because I think that this is the best part of the tree's Nabari. Now, I'm going to look at the way that this character of the trunk right here has a really strong root that starts down here and there's a big thick ridge that comes up this part of this tree and it leads up to branches that fall in line with that. And that's a good indicator of where strong growth has occurred is that whenever a tree, especially a bald cypress, they're very obvious about this, Whenever there's swelling in the trunk or a ridge or some kind of indention, or uh, you can call it veining. This is all based off of live veins. It goes trunk from root to branch. And where there's a lot of growth, in turn, there's a lot of root growth. So it will cause it to swell a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna go in with a wire brush and I'm gonna knock off some of this heavily, heavily plated bark to see if I can find any more interest in the trunk line of this tree. moss. This moss was already growing here. When the tree was collected, this moss was just already on the tree. And so, it's simply because when this tree was dug up, the water more than likely sat above the trunk uh, level, the level where you see the moss occurs. It was probably always water just kind of fluctuating up and down this tree. So I'm just going to get some of this moss off so I can see it better. And here's that long straininess of bald cypress, how they kind of peel off in long strings. And this this process is perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. This tree is going to grow more bark. It's going to get thicker. Uh, this is a very common practice with bald, with bald cypress. Bone side, this is very, very common. Uh, flaking off old bark like this. It's not hurting the tree.
It looks like I'm gonna go with this one because it's the strongest of the five. And also there's a very pronounced section on the wood here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the rest of these uh, really strong shoots coming off the chop. And then I'm gonna start making an adjustment up here. And I'm gonna decide where I'm gonna carve. side of the head just now. It kind of hurt. Cypress trees will fight back. And they're, whip, they're very whippy trees. There's another branch hit me right in the face. Get out of here. No, I'm not going to do that. Like that. back here but unfortunately I can't keep it because I'm gonna be carving out the back side of this and it's just almost as thick as this main leader that I'm already growing here and it's just a little big for the top of the tree it's gonna come off anyway and then there's a branch back here rotate this tree there's a branch back here that's nice and thick it's got some good age to it um, it bifurcates. Doesn't bif it doesn't bifurcate as far back as I would like it to. I might be able to put some heavy gauge wire on this and get it, get it to compress back inwards, but it might not be worth the struggle. And there's also a branch further down that's a better thickness that I can just cut back and get that bifurcation closer to the trunk. So let's set this up and see if I even want to do that. That's too close to where I'm going to be carving. Get rid of that. This is going to be in my way while I'm carving. This is coming around the back. I'm going to leave anything further down. Okay. So I'm thinking that I carve down to this branch. Just so I can make this part of my flat top. This is going to be left relatively alone until it grows into, I'm gonna put wire on it to give it some interest to it. So you mark out with a pencil, with a white pencil, to see where I'm going to be cutting this tree and carving it. I'm just going to come all the way down and I'm going to hit this point right here. I'm not going to come to this branch, but I'm going to get close to it uh, because there will be a roll, there will be a heel, and we'll leave this for now. But another reason why I want to get rid of this branch and work on the top here is all this knobby, just it's a knuckle now. This is what you call a knuckle. And so there's already a cambium roll, so I'm not going to be scared to, to bite into this cambium roll and really get the taper I'm looking for. I'll go ahead and get rid of this branch, just so it's out of the way. These branch cutters, if you can't tell, <laughs> very tough tools. All right, so, I think this looks like an alien. Very, very goofy, like there's two eyeballs, a nose, a mouth, <laughs> it's just, it's time to carve this, uh, this big block of wood out of here.
So the reason why I just did that is I like to go in and draw out the line with my carving tool so that I know where to stop. Because once I start eating down on this and I get caught up in the moment of wood carving, which this is going to be about, it's probably gonna take about 30, 40 minutes to get this just right. So to spare you guys all the, the crazy amount of time this is gonna take, we're gonna cut. And when I get close to it, then I'll, then I'll come back and you'll see. I'll, I'll give you all a little bit of a glimpse of what it's gonna look like when I start getting a lot of this bulk out of here. As y'all can see, there is a lot less of that chunk that used to be at the top of this. And uh, that carving job, like I had predicted, took an easy 40 minutes just to get through uh, half of what I wanted to do. And I have to call it a day, come back to this, and continue working on this tree. I'm back in the studio again to work on this tree. As you can tell, I opted for shorts today because a couple of days ago when I started working on this tree, it was actually about 50, 60 degrees, and now it's about 70 degrees and very humid. It's actually been raining all day. So it's that just tells you how wild the climate here can be sometimes. But this is the back where I've carved it out. I'll kind of rotate it around so you can get a better look of it. Uh, you can definitely see from the front where you can see now that the taper in the trunk comes up and I have done my best to carve and taper into the new uh, new leader that we have here that we will let grow and eventually heal over this big chop that I have in the back here. So from here, I'm gonna go in and start choosing the branches that I want for my design. And the design I'm gonna go for with this one, it's still going to be a flat top style, but it's going to be a little bit more of a variant. So. I've done other trees like this in the past, and I think this is kind of what you would call more of a uh, middle-aged cypress design. So it's in between that stage of the top is starting to kind of lean to the side and start to look like that flat top shape, but you still have a lot of lower branching that exists, and those branches are starting to become weak. They're not necessarily to the point where they're starting to fall away like you've seen on my previous design. So I'm gonna go in and start flipping some branches off and kind of see which ones are good and good flexible branches that I can make in my uh, future design for this tree. Side note, if there's ever a branch close to your chop site here where you carved it out, such as this branch here, do not cut it very flush to the bark right here, right next to where you carved out because then you'll have another open spot where the tree's going to have to heal and it could cause the callus roll to look a little ugly and on uniform right here. So cut these guys to kind of a nub and then cut them uh, cut them flush to the trunk later on when the callus has gotten a good ways over this wound.
So this is what I ended up with after removing all the branches that I found to be all necessary for our design. So I removed everything that's that was kind of growing inside of the striation muscles of the, the trunk itself. So the parts where the tree had a little dip into the trunk, there were branches growing out of those ang at weird angles and those spots I didn't like. There were also so many of them that were growing down below, further down than the actual height that I want to make this tree feel. I feel like I want it to feel very tall. It is a very big tree, but leaving it taller and thinner up here is going to make it feel even taller, more towering than it actually is. And in bonsai, in the world of bonsai, as far as its size, this isn't a pushing the boundaries of like an extra large bonsai. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the couple of branches I have left over and I'm going to start to build that shape uh, with these few branches and with just a little bit of movement in these branches and kind of showing how they are going towards that flat top design, you'll start to see that middle aged kind of look to it that I was talking about. And that's when the top here, instead of it being straight up in the air and growing like very juvenile, it starts to less to look less like a Christmas tree kind of shape, like kind of like a point, just straight pointed shape. And the top will start to actually come over on old, older cypresses. Um, it's just from expanding out and becoming a bigger solar panel. And then the branches on the top start going back the other direction. And that's what gives you that that to the side and then off to the side and then that builds on top of that and you get these little back and forths like this and then you build up that what I call a little bit like a like a deer angler. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some wire on here and get some good movement out of these branches that I do have and the front of the tree might change. The front could be anywhere from here to all the way to around here somewhere. So let's see what I can do with a little bit of wire. Side note, on whenever I was trimming off of this leader, you saw me cut a lot of those branches that were right in this section up to here. There's, I left plenty on the top up in here because all these atypical buds that are going to be up on the top of here, I want those to be strong and I don't want to cut them back at any point. And I want, it, I want this tree to continue to thicken this piece. But I don't want to keep too many branches in this section because I want to develop these two branches to become part of my future, my flat top, and I don't want any shade out right here.
So this is the tree after doing the initial design, kind of laying out the branches or the bones of the tree is what we call it sometimes. And so this one's not nearly as exciting as the previous one because I was able to carve that one and get a little bit more of a dramatic movement out of the top of the tree. Whereas this one, we're gonna to have to be more patient with it. We're gonna to have to let this top run and we're gonna to have to let this heal over and begin to get thicker here and start to fuse into this new trunk line. These branches down here, they will develop much faster than you can imagine because the future of developing these bald cypresses after we've removed all the branches that we don't want, we start concentrating more energy on the branches that we are going to use. And so as it buds back on the trunk, we're gonna remove all those buds that try to bud out down below because it's going to do that. And then we're going to work on the buds that develop on these branches here. Um, if I get a bud that shoots back on this branch a little bit further, I will opt to grow into a new branch there and probably shorten this because I want to get my inner nodes closer. Same thing with this one here. This one is just one whip that comes out to the side. This, this branch here needs a lot of buds to pop in here. So I'm only kind of worried about giving it like some movement right up in here because I can really do either like a cut and grow kind of style thing and then wire out the twigginess of the branches as they develop or I can simply just kind of grow, grow it out piece by piece. And I mean, I could go in and grow up this shoot, the shoot off of here, just thicken the branch, get it to a certain thickness, chop it off, start over again. So I think that this branch and this branch are the ones that need to stay the smaller branches in the bottom, the ones that are kind of the slowly going away type branches. And then these branches up here, well, trunk line and this branch, this branch I'm hoping to develop into like almost like a secondary top. So this is going to come out really far here and it's going to come out probably about into this zone here and it's going to help kind of cover this area just a slight bit where this wound is going to be for a while and it's not going to be just because I'm trying to cover it. It's just that's where I kind of ideally see it showing up and maybe a little bit in the back here. This is going to be the overall height right here of my flat top. Um, so this branch here, it comes out the other side of this, of this trunk line here and I'm not going to let this get really big because it will cause a, a, a swell right here and I don't want that. So I'm leaving it here just so we can get some, we can get some greenery on this side. Might use it, might not. What will happen is I'll get lots of budding up in here and then I'll have multiple options to choose little, littler branches to go with, but potentially I will grow this up thicken this, grow this out, thicken this a little bit, and this will be the new trunk line of the tree. So it'll be like that thing where I told you the tree has gone to the side and it's kind of like fallen over and then it goes back the other way. And I'll build a branch off of there and off of there and we'll start making the little antlers I was talking about. So this is a long-term tree. This tree is gonna be roughly about five years before we start really seeing that flat top form. Uh, until then, it's going to be really healthy, really happy little tree because we're going to fertilize it and water it really, really well throughout each summer. And then as time goes on, there will be a few repots that will be done to the tree. And then the wound will start to heal over and we'll be really set. Because we, once we get this, this wound healed over, that's exactly what, that's the main thing that we're concentrating on on a tree like this. I'm gonna grab my measuring tape and kind of measure it across here and let you guys know how big that wound is and then kind of give like a little bit of an estimate of how long it would take for it to heal over this. Um, because we have different trees in different sizes out there that have healed certain types of wounds and different diameters of wounds. So let me see how big this wound is. As far as like the surface area of this cut, it's about four inches like round. Across visually, it's about three. So, so in that range, it's going to be a lot of wood to cover for the tree. And so I would estimate, like I had said, it's going to take probably about five years. So the five year mark when this starts to thicken up and become more believable as the new trunk line, this will be very close to healing. At, five, at the five year mark, we might have a little hole on the back side of this tree where it's just about to close up. There might be like a half an inch. 
So we're gonna let it go from there. One thing that we need to do on a cut this big, and I did it on the previous tree as well, is we're going to apply a bonsai healing paste mixed with a wood glue, and we're going to make sure to put a nice solid layer over this entire piece of wood. It'll help protect the wood, it'll help the wood from not rotting out, and it'll kind of seal it. And also we're gonna catch the cambium. So anywhere that the cambium is exposed on here, I'm going to put the wood glue uh, bonsai healing paste mixture over the entire thing. I don't want any moisture to get out. I don't want any dieback issues. I don't want any bugs to get in here. I don't want any kind of infections to invade this tree because this is just a big, massive wound. But if I seal it up, we're going to give the tree some type of a protective armor in a way. Okay, I'm gonna let that set, and it's going to kind of ooze and run a little bit, so I put a lot of it on the top, and then kind of just try to even it out, and then it'll run down towards the bottom of the cut, and then just kind of let it harden over, over time. As it gets tacky, then I can kind of put a little bit more to fill in the spots that I missed. We're gonna make sure that we cover every single spot, though. If we see any green, or any exposed cambium, or any, any rough spots on this cut, we need to cover every single little tiny piece of it needs to be covered with this glue. And I'm going to go get the next tree and pull it up here and show you guys what that tree looks like. And then I will be shooting the next part of flat top bald cypress bonsai design part three. So here's a sneak peek at tree number three. I want to do something a little bit different for you guys this time around and go for a double trunk style tree. Yes, you can make a flat top bald cypress out of a double trunk like this. It just takes a little bit more of creativity, a little bit more finesse of wiring, and of course, some wood carving. Thanks for watching, guys. That was flat top bald cypress bonsai design number two. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, and look for more awesome bonsai design videos to come. Thank you, guys.